Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. It really is something that we take for granted every day, driving down the road, the expressway, the freeway, the highway, these big vehicles, the tanker trucks, the big rigs. We take for granted the, the amount of training that goes into that with the driver, the safety measures, the protocols. And this gentleman here is making it his life's work to make sure that that is safe. He helps a lot of these companies that uh, dispatch these vehicles to make sure that they're safe on the road. I've learned so much in the last couple of months in talking with him. DOTTrainingSolutions.com is his company. Matt Freeman is back with us here on the show. How are you doing today? Hey, doing great, Steve. Thanks for uh, having me back as always. You know, always have a fun Fun conversation here and a uh, lot lots to talk about and some things to recap on. Um, hey, before we get started here, I just wanted to say a couple of things. I uh, lost a great coworker uh, over the weekend, Cheryl Bonham. She was uh, a teammate and when I was uh, an agent uh, with FMCSA and uh, known her for many years. And when she retired, she came to work for me here with DOT Training Solutions. Uh, great inspiration to our team, uh, straight cut to the chase kind of gal. You knew where you stood and uh, just an expert and a friend. Uh, I'm going to miss, my company's going to miss, and uh, just a lot of friends out there. If you knew Cheryl, uh, she was a great person, and uh, you always knew where you stood with her. Yeah. It was the best part about her. So Very, very sorry to, to hear. That. Yeah. Thanks, and, uh, I'm blessed and grateful I had the opportunity to meet her on one of these podcasts um, yes. and yeah, ball of fire uh, and um, just a good vibe that came from her. That's what I detected. Mm, yeah. Recently. You, you, you knew where, you knew where you stood at all times. And uh, if I had to run something by her, that, that's who I call. Cause I just, I knew right where it was going, <laughs> mm. you know? Yeah. So she, she set you straight or she, or she sat and listened to you. And uh, we, we could talk, regulations and compliance all day long talk trucks uh, or we could talk about uh you know just our life daily lives because we were friends but yeah. there was never a dull conversation and you call it and need a five minute talk and next thing you know it's you know an hour later and we've talked about so much so um big inspiration to me and stood by me for a long time and there's always that person whenever you, you wanted to someone to talk to and they could they could keep you off that ledge. You know, they just, someone to listen to you. So yeah. um, anyway, I just wanted to put a shout out to her and family and friends and uh, she will be missed. Yep. Prayers for, for her and, and her family. Um, yes. You mentioned agent and we haven't talked about that in a long time, probably only came up maybe the first time we got together. Um, but I want to circle back on that, your background. And now you work with companies to make sure that they're, they're safe on the road, but you had a whole different role, you know, back in the day. Tell us about that. Oh, well, you know, back in the day, I was, uh, you know, working, you know, state and federal enforcement, uh, you know, as a hazmat specialist, uh, I was a safety investigator. Um, you know, it was different, you know, different areas, uh, where you work, uh, different, um, how should you say it, uh, mannerisms. I guess different cultures, uh, the way you look at things. Some, some areas were more strict where there was no leeway. Uh, and some were more about education. And what I mean by that, you, you, you never, you never go let you, you don't, if you see violations or, or things out of whack, you know, you know what the rules are. You got to write them up, but there was also methods of going in and writing up those violations. And, and at the same time, educating that carrier, Hey, this is what you did wrong, and you know you, you don't want to have to come back because the more you come back, because you know the more they mess up, you know those penalties, you know can raise, and depending on if you're doing a state or federal case, depending on you know what agency you're with, uh, on the federal side those those penalties can be high, wow. and you know you're looking at federal penalties versus state penalty, um, you're looking at a you know, for example, when I was with the state, you might have a hundred dollar penalty, but if that was a if it was a federal uh, violation, well, then you might be looking at a thousand dollar penalty. Just is in comparison. 
So when I would go in and work with companies, you know, I was there to find everything I could find, make sure, you know, where the compliance was. You're looking at all the safe, safety aspects, you know, from the bookkeeping side to the drivers to the vehicles, you know, uh, your drug and alcohol, making sure that that complies if it was required. Uh, you know, as a, with the CDO vehicle uh, or non CDO vehicle, um, you know, so it's different. Um, I was an educator uh, as I am today. Uh, so when I find when I would find things wrong with uh, companies, I would do my best to explain to them uh, what was doing wrong. Nobody wanted to see an enforcement guy with a badge come in their door. No one likes that. You know, I had a lot of folks that respected the badge. And they just wanted you to get in and get out, mm. um, you know, because it, 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 when customers come in, they see someone sitting there and they find out the DOT is there. It doesn't look good for business. A lot of times they, they want you to set off, you know, where you're not in the very front room you know, where people see you. Um, so there was a lot of things to it, you know, on, on the I've also worked for in the areas to where, you know, the supervisor didn't want you to educate. You were there to look for violations, uh, let them know what's going on, and walk out the door. So it's it just a culture depending on who you work for. And every supervisor uh, is different. And, you know, someone, some wants you to look for certain things. Everybody's got their pet peeve. You know, you, of course, you're, you're there to find violations. That's what, that's what the job is. Um, some things stood up more to others, you know, certain things you would, your eye would catch more than the next person. Um, so there, there was lots of different ways and, and I never really talk about it, but uh, mm -hmm. it's very interesting on when you go into a motor carrier, uh, how much you find it. It just depends on how hard you looked, you know, you're there to do a job. You have, you have your own checklist, you know what, what they're supposed to comply with and anything you see that's uh, not following compliance. That's what you write up. So it's different, and, and every every investigator is different. You, you all, you're all taught the same way. You're taught to read the regulations and how to do your job. But again, someone might walk in and find, you know, 15 things. Someone might come in and find 18 things, you know, wrong. So it just it really just depends on uh, you know your focus, uh, what you're trained on, and what you're looking for. As an agent. Did you spend some time, call it in the field, for those type of inspections? Or a lot of times did you go to the independent companies and uh, request a look at their records? Sure. On, on, on my side of the house, we did all the internal stuff. I didn't do the roadside as a roadside officer like we've interviewed uh, my staff sure. uh, in the past. Uh, my, my job was to go to the company itself uh, or the terminals and look at the files and the vehicles and talk about the drivers at that period. So, you know, we would go in, I mean, always call it the, I always call it the internal side because you're not roadside. Okay. You're not pulling, I don't have, I was, didn't have lights to go pull people over. So we would go into the actual companies, you know, uh, when there were issues and look at, go through other things. Well, as we, we talked before, the, the record keeping mm -hmm. is so essential. Uh, and if things don't add up, uh, yeah, it, it could lead to an infraction. Um, cargo tank inspections mm -hmm. and recapping some of the things we've talked about in the uh, in the past couple of weeks. Um, break that down for us. How does that happen? Is it an inspection that takes place in the field? Surprise inspection? What's going on there? Yeah, sure. So two 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 types of inspections. Like we're, let's, we'll talk about a cargo tank inspection. Yeah, you, you have your roadside inspection that an officer does. Okay, when he's doing a hazmat inspection, uh, he's doing a full inspection, walking around, full visual inspection on that tank. Okay, that's the enforcement side. Anything that stands out that doesn't meet uh, the re regu regulations as required, you know, you're gonna they're gonna find violations. So the next step on on a lot of stuff we talked about, recapping, you know, to the in-house stuff, you have your inspectors. Your registered inspectors who, when they bring the cargo tanks in, they do an annual inspection on those cargo tanks to make sure that they meet all the requirements of that inspection uh, for that period of time. So you have a visual inspection. Um, they're doing a leakage inspection. Okay. 
or, or a leakage test, a visual inspection, and then they also do an internal inspection. Okay, so depending on what they're in there for, uh, those are going to be your annual inspections. Okay, so well, once they get those annual inspections completed, they're going to mark, as we've talked in the past, again, they're going to mark the side of the, the front left side of that cargo tank. You're going to see the numbers VIK, and you're going to have some dates by them. Okay, depending on there may be other uh, testing on there, but to kind of flip back to the roadside inspection. You know, so now that that roadside officer is going to be looking at those numbers. So they really go hand in hand. Or is one in compliance or is it not in compliance? So that officer is making sure that those inspection dates are accurate and up to date. Because for both sides of them, if if that if the tank leaves out and those inspections aren't updated, so when that officer pulls him over, he's going that's what he's going to be looking for. Therefore, if they don't meet up to date, what happens? The officer is going to write it up. What also in turns from there is those re- if if Dean, those reports can go forward. So whenever someone like what I used to do would go into a uh, carrier's office, I'm already looking for the, that tank because it's out of date. So to, what, what, what would I would do? I would go back and look at those maintenance records to see when that was last done. So we went out first thing you want to make sure, was it current? Did they go ahead and fix the issue or do we have a trailer out there running, uh, with expired um, inspections on it. So mm. it's kind of a full circle on yeah. the inspection process. And, and, and with that, is it yearly or it really depends on the, the, the tank itself? Uh, it's yearly. So you have a five-year test. It's, it's test and inspections. And then you have, and then you have a one year. So one, one and five year. And it just depends on um, what, what, what kind of tank it is, what they're doing to it. Uh, what kind of chemicals it's hauling. Um, sometimes certain tests are deemed every year that may not be for uh, other tanks. Do a lot of companies hire somebody um, to do the inspections where it is it is from like the DOT comes in? No, on, on the register inspector side, of it, on the actual testing and inspecting of cargo tanks, um, that is typically high, done in-house by a registered inspector. Okay. Or they also have what they call mobile inspectors who go around the different companies and, and do uh, testing on those sites. Wow. So it, it's both. So that, that's that's their their job essentially just to go and test. Yes. And and inspect. Let's go to let's go to cleaning. Um, mm-hmm. Is it typically somebody on staff that's certified to clean, or do they they call somebody from the outside to come in and do that? Well, depending on the facilities. Okay, so there are certain deemed areas that are tank wash uh, facilities, and that's all they do. Okay, they they clean tanks as they come in uh, for multiple reasons. Okay, mm-hmm. for one, because they're getting inspected, two, because they're changing out chemicals, have to have a clean tank so they can put a new chemical in there. Uh, so w- with that said, sometimes it could be in-house. So if you have a big enough shop, they may have their own cleaning uh, station there uh, a lot of times i only know of i've only seen a few times where a mobile inspector has a mobile cleaning setup and can go do it uh which is a pretty pretty impressive system and, you know that's uh, uh pretty smart there so he's going so he's cleaning but he's also inspecting yes mm. so in order to get into the cargo tanks you want to have a clean tank you, you know, you got to make sure everything is safe, no chemicals or fumes or anything of a hazard in that tank. So they have a system that process, they can, it is the coolest thing I think I've ever seen. Um, but they have it set up where they have their own water tank, they have a waste tank. So as they're cleaning it out, cleaning the, you know, putting the clean water in to pressurize it and spray it down uh, at a high temperature, uh, it's also coming out into another vac. Uh, that's on another trailer that clean, you know, that pulls all the dirty water out. So it's a, uh, it's impressive. I mean, they literally have their own tank wash on wheels. Um, wow. I've only, I've only, I have one customer who has one. Um, and I only know mm-hmm. of a couple others out there that's even being used. So it's, it's a pretty neat system. Yeah. You know, you yeah. think of cleaning a tank, you got to go into a big wash bay and, and let the guys jump in and do their thing. But um, a lot of neat stuff out there. There really is. Oh, well, what'd you say? 
in, in that you have to clean it before you inspect it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this guy's got it. <laughs> He's got the lock on it. Um, right. The, the convenience and it, in it in itself, right? And, and he's a mobile inspector, so right. he's making sure he's safe no matter what what the situation is uh, on that side of it. So, yeah, it's a it's a pretty unique guy. Super clever. I wish I could, <laughs> yeah, I wish I wish I could show up, but I can't. <laughs> yeah. So we, we talked about the tank cleaning and mm -hmm. the danger involved in that um, and the culture surrounding that, the mindset of that and even some some. Quick examples of you could have somebody on the team drops a cell phone in the tank, goes in there to grab it. Hey, just a second. I'll just hold my breath, whatever, and goes in and there's dangerous vapors, uh, substances in there, and it could take you out just like that. Um, yes. There's it's. I had no idea that 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 could possibly happen, but it's the same thing, I guess, if you're driving and you look down at your cell phone. Just like that. Ah, it'll be second. Ah, what I mean. Um, who typically would do the cleaning? It's going to be somebody that's certified in that. That's a specialty. Sure. So you you have shops that are set up to do the cleaning. You know, obviously there's uh, a lot of things that go into it. Uh, you know, you don't have to have any special skill. You don't go to a school. Uh, you know, you and I can go jump in and start cleaning cargo tanks with the training uh, to do it. You know, um, hmm. So there's nothing else. you don't have, there's no certification. It's just, you got to meet your OSHA requirements. You know, there's EPA stuff that falls with that because you, you know, you, you got wastewater coming out. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's, it's a serious matter right now. Yeah. And I've been working with some team members and customers on, uh, you know, Doug Vineyard. We talked with him a few weeks ago uh, about uh, changing the culture and trying to get the mindset to think, Think before you react. And uh, some of these guys that have, you know, like we talked to, there have been nine deaths this year. On it, I just had a meeting uh, this morning about about the same issue on um, on this culture and what we got to do. People get complacent; it mm. happens. Mm. And you know, my 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 primary goal in anything that we do is to try not to, you know, get people not to be complacent. You know? teach people not to be with complacency and things. So, you know, think, you know, look, check, you know, review what you're doing, you know, make a set of process up so you don't get into that automatic, oh, I can grab it. Again, people drop things in these things. It happens. Um, everything seems to be good. You know, do I need to do one more check? What's your policy say? Right. Policy says you have to do a third check or just whatever they may be looking at, and they jump in. Uh, I'm good. You know, it's you can't ever be too safe when it comes to this kind of stuff because this is a dangerous job. It really is. Yeah, uh, it, it can be. I, I I would say it could kind of be fun and inter interesting at the same time because you're looking at a lot of different types of tanks and stuff that come in, but it it is dangerous. And just the, the confined space alone. You know, to be in there, um, and how many different substances have been in and out of mm -hmm. that? Uh, wow. Um, driver awareness. Now we talked with, uh, I think his name was Dave Powell last time we got together. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and he, uh, I don't, I can't remember the exact title of his award, but like Grand Champion Driver. Do you recall what what? Uh -huh. He was a great. He, he was a National Tank Truck Carriers Grand Champion Driver of the Year. Wow. And, and is that based uh, by and large uh, about on safety? Yes. Uh, it, it's all about safety. You know, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into that, as Dave was saying, you know, they got to go through a process there. They aren't just uh, not anybody can go up there. They're selected with their companies and then they go through a vetting process and, and that's how they determine it down to the best driver. There's a lot of great uh, contestants or should I say drivers that go up for that um, every year. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty big, it's, it's a pretty big deal. It's not, it, it is a big deal to these drivers to get honored for what they work so hard on. Um, you, you had different, there's different types of championship things. You got drivers with million miles, never had an accident, mm. which is just, which is just amazing. I, I you know, uh, there's all kinds of different things out there, but with, with Dave Powell, um, uh, gotten to know him 
uh, really well and such a nice guy. And he, and he so passionate about driving and, and helping younger, the younger generation get into this field and uh, show them the interest in what they, what they can do and what they've learned. And, um, he sees it a different way when, you know, growing up in my background, you know, I had family, cousins, grandfathers, uncles, you know, that drove trucks. I didn't see it. I saw a totally different way then. Hey, that's what you did. Yeah. You, 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 you go out and you drove a truck and you make a living, uh, where he looks at it a whole different way of, man, I love what I do. I'm, I'm able to get out here and he's transporting fuel. You know, he's taking fuel to the stations every day that we need to, we use. Yep. You know, so he, and he loves what he does. I've never seen somebody so passionate about uh, what he does, he loves the company and, that makes him a good driver. Mm, even more so, and it doesn't have to be this way, but the fact that he owns his his own tanker and, and rig. So yeah, there's, there's a a, um, a a sense of pride there. Yeah. Well, he, own, he owns the truck. He pulls their tankers. But but yes, he, that, he does. That, I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh no, no. That, that, that That's okay. It's uh, usually I've had people say, oh, you got – sometimes they do have both. You know, uh, people have a trailer and a truck. In his case, he he owns his own truck. He takes pride in it. Um, there's a lot of great owner operators out there, um, you know. I like and I and it's great to see companies who have owner operators, you know, because mm -hmm. they're hot, these guys are looking for work and they're able to use their truck to, to pull their stuff. And you know, the key the key thing about it is the most important thing about that is they get from point A to point B safe. Yeah, and, and you know, interestingly, we talk about you know a million miles, no accident. That could be the best driver on the planet, but it's not only him, it's the awareness of the drivers around him that could cause an accident. Or yeah. let's say somebody's driving next to a tanker and they're like, man, he's not going fast enough. And you get in front of him, then you cause an accident. Um, so it's not just the drivers, <laughs> not just yeah. the uh, the tanker drivers. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it, like, like we talked here, you got an 80,000 pound rig, regardless if it's transporting a, a cargo tank. If it's transporting a, you know, a big dry van uh, or what it is, you know, the awareness, you got to be distracted driving. You got to watch those, there's blind spots. And the, this is when accidents happen because a driver may not see you. And there's some really good video out there uh, of diagrams on where, where your blind spots are. I mm -hmm. I've learned that, you know, even when driving around with my wife, if I get along a truck, I don't want to be beside that big truck very long because he may not be able to see me. And how many times have you been next to a truck and the guy starts to come over and a few, few choice words come out your mouth, but then you got to realize he really didn't see me. It's not that he didn't look, his blind spot did not see you. So uh, I'm right there with everybody else. I've, you know, I've, I've said my choice words and I realize after, so I was like, you know what? He can't see me. He didn't do that on hmm. purpose. Now you just said something. I want to make sure. I heard it right that when you're traveling in your your car and there's a tanker next to you, you intentionally and I want to make sure maybe I heard it wrong. You intentionally try not to be next to it. You get around it or you 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 make an effort not to be in that you know, maybe that that spot where it could be a blind spot. Yeah, I, I do. I try not to be. I don't want to ever be in a blind spot of a, a big rig. Sure. I'm in a smaller vehicle. Yep. You know, I drive, I drive an SUV, uh, and you know, it's not a little vehicle, but it's not a big vehicle. Mm -hmm. So there are blind spots Yeah, and I, I make it as a safety caution, not to ride next to a, a rig, no matter what size of the rig kind of rig it is, uh, very long. I want to make sure I get around and, um, uh, especially if you're in traffic, you know, it's one thing going, it's one thing going slow down the highway where you're in a traffic situation where everybody's moving slow. But third thing, when you're speeding down the road, you want to get around them, give yeah. them their space, give them their room. Um, because one thing that Dave did bring up, you know, the stopping, it takes a lot longer to stop one of those big rigs than it does you or I in our, in our smaller vehicles. Yeah. Wow. I've learned a lot here. And you know, just coming out of your mouth. <laughs> about how when you're driving your vehicle next to a rig, it says a lot, you know, and I've, and, and yeah, I guess we add here, as long as it's safe to get around it, or, I mean, you could be pacing with other vehicles and sure. that's where, that's where you are. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, I guess be even more mindful, but if you're pacing next to that rig, 
like you said, Matt, they can't see you, you know, and it's not you, but if something else happens up here, you're next to that and he could cut you off, not wanting to. Uh, interesting. Uh, always learn stuff with you. <laughs> There's not, not even Thanks. a doubt. <laughs> Uh, and this is what it's all about. You helping get the word out there, working with these companies that own these vehicles and making sure they're safe, inspected, and adhere to all the rules and regulations of the road. DOT, uh, DOT training solutions.com is your website, right? Yes, sir. Sure. And knowing you for as long as I've known you here doing these shows, you're not a salesman. This is not a high pressure thing. It's a, I want to help you out. Reach out to me. Let me see what you're doing. And uh, start a conversation, a safety conversation, if you will. Yeah, it, it, that's what it is. Just give me a call. You don't have to be a customer, but if you want to call and, and need some help, that's what we're here for. If we do business, we do business. But you know what? It's about being safe. Yeah, that's what it's all it's about. about. Safe. Safety first. Matt, thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Steve. It's, it's always fun and a pleasure. Thank hey, you. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, online radio box, and simple radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.